there, everybody. Uh, Celeste here. This is day four of me hosting Parlour. Um, I am in Dalston in London. It's obviously a lot brighter and lighter than where you guys are in chilly Melbs. Um, today I want to talk about um, some tips and tricks for being better. <laughs> I've got Steve being called. <laughs> some tips, tips and tricks for being better at um, your social media and I'm going to be bringing on a live and um, do bear with me I have a few Wi-Fi issues today um, but mostly I wanted to quickly touch on what I talked about yesterday so just reiterating my key points were um, have faith in your comms people and, and hire smart and recognize that there are a lot of different ways that you can um, approach comms and get the right team behind you to do it all right, introducing my guest, Dave. I'm adding you to the video now. Go. Dave Sharp joining me from Melbourne. Now, Dave is a fabulous comms consultant and digital marketing consultant. Um, we've been chatting this morning. Hello, how are you? Hey, hey, Sla Can I hear you, Dave? Can, can you hear me? Wait a I second. Can... <laughs> Let me get rid of it. <laughs> you can hear me? There we go. I can hear you. Oh my god! Yeah, for, the, yeah. for the social media expert, I'm 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 like not really figuring this out, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's part of good so, comms. You've got to give it all a go. You've got to test it. Well, exciting doing you're doing like a doing a joint live stream. I I have not seen this before. Well, we had a really good joint live stream uh, yesterday. That Ooh. was with Joe McAvell from Verity Campbell Comms. I think you were commenting yeah. little thumbs up on those ones uh, when yeah, we talked about in. how comms can I know, just like... even, yeah, <laughs> lots of thumbs up. Yeah, great. exactly. Sorry, so, dropping um, so out a little why bit. Don't you... Yeah, I know. Oh, me? Am I? A little bit. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's you. I don't know. Um, Maybe it's me. But it should be okay. Closer to the cafe. Can somebody in the the chat, um, let us so know if the, who's got the back. Give us a thumbs up to let us know what you can hear. If there's... Dave, why don't you give us a bit of background as to what, to what you do? Yeah, um, so I'm a marketing consultant for small architecture firms. Before that, I studied architecture. Uh, I was at university for, it took me six years <laughs> getting my architecture degree. And then yeah. when I finished, I realized, you know, the whole time, all I really cared about was architects and I didn't care enough about architecture. So that was like, now I'm basically a marketing consultant um, and I work with directors to help them improve their marketing over time, just step by step, gradually improving it. Wonderful. And do you work more closely in terms of um, strategy? Are you about construction? Do you focus more on um, certain technologies? Yeah, so in a typical week, I'll work with 20 different architecture firms, right? And they're all shapes and sizes. So it might be a small firm that's just getting started and we're trying to figure out that strategy. Where are you positioning your firm? What's your website going to say? Um, what's going to happen when you have projects coming up? So there's that stuff. But then right after that meeting, I'll jump in with a 40-person looking at So it's, it's really a bit of a jack of all trades thing, strategy, execution. Um, every firm kind of goes at their own pace and we focus on things as they become important. Don't overcomplicate it too much. Um, yep. Yeah, that's, that's the key. Wonderful. And so I guess today I'd like to um, talk to the general parlor audience who are tuning in about social and digital media. I mean, yesterday with Joe, we talked about the value of communications and what that can do for the profession. Um, you know, it lays, yeah. evens the playing field. Everyone of all demographics has access to technology. And so we can start to share really diverse and important stories. So when we are sharing those stories, what would you say are some, well, I guess let's start with some common problems that people come to you with. You know, do architects have, you know, a common issue that they like to solve in terms of their comms? You know, what do you hear the most? Well, the most, the most common issue I hear is partially content. Um, we never mm -hmm. feel like we have enough projects. I can talk to a firm that's yeah. done a hundred projects and they still don't feel like they've got enough projects for Instagram for some reason. <laughs> yeah. The other um, 
is often feeling like we're talking to a crowd. We don't know really who's out there. Wi-Fi to see if this is a better connection. Well, I hope I hope it's you and not me because I can I, try I, I can try and switch things up. <laughs> I think it was me. I've just switched off my Wi-Fi from this cafe, so I should be good to okay, go. You okay. seem clearer already. Oh, perfect, perfect. Great. Okay, awesome, awesome. Yes, um, there's some common yes, issues. Content. Yeah. Content, number one, content. Um, also feeling like you've already burned your content once you've shared yeah. it once, right? Yeah. So like, oh, we spent three years on that massive project and then we shared that one hero shot and now we can never talk about it again, right? So there's, there's that, that's obviously a big problem. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there is that general just feeling of kind of disconnection with all the people that are out there following you. Like, who are they? What do they care about? Um, we're trying to read the tea leaves of you know, reach insights, um, likes to try and decipher what people are getting. You know, a really common scenario I have looking at reviewing Instagram accounts and stuff like that with my clients is like, mm -hmm. well, this photo got 300 likes and then this one got 50. Like, <laughs> what's going on? You know, so that's, so those are some of the bigger um, frustrations. But um, yeah, those, those, those seem like two of the major issues to me, but there's, there's so many things that can yep. get in the way and become problems. I think something that we talked about yesterday with Joe was, um, confidence. Um, traditionally yeah. architects haven't been confident in sharing their stories. I think the attitude to marketing has been that you don't need to, which as a business is not correct. Um, so yeah. what would you say has happened to confidence levels of architects now that we're all using social media? Do you think we're more yeah. confident to share our stories i would say i would say probably it depends on it depends on the architect right there are some architects who really i they they identify with the architecture community on social media and they feel like it's a very collegiate supportive space where you know people are encouraging of the stuff that they share and and there's a lot of um it's a community that can be very rewarding if you kind of bring the goods and contribute in a really positive way. And I think people find that kind of quite motivating. Um, but then there are other people that with their Instagram, they can kind of feel quite alone and, and on their own and it's and not really connected into that sort of stuff. So confidence can be definitely lacking there, particularly if the architect is not a personal fan of social media themselves. Um, yes. <laughs> then it's not really a question of confidence, but maybe a question of overconfidence. They're like, they sort of dis bit, maybe a bit dismissive um, of, of it. So they don't mm -hmm. take it as seriously. Um, but, but when, but when you start to, when you start to, um, you know, I guess show, show directors or work with architects or even just you guys watching this um, video to not necessarily have to compare yourself to the firms that have, 40,000 followers, 50,000 followers that, you know, are just really sort of in your face with how yeah. big they are on social. Um, everything that they do seems to just look perfect and work perfectly. Um, you don't, you don't have to be like, you don't have to worry about that. Just try your best. And really one of the biggest advantages of being a smaller practice and just getting started with social is that that's the time when nobody's watching you so <laughs> you know, no it doesn't like, matter what you put up it doesn't okay. matter yeah it doesn't matter i mean the worst you could do would just be to grab somebody's attention because at the mm. at the beginning yeah I, I mean your friends and your family and you know the students you teach at uni they're all they're all watching but other people aren't yet they're going to be yeah. uh, soon but you know you're just getting started right you shouldn't expect to be amazing at it on your own the, totally. the moment like a like a natural gifted social media expert right so yeah just sort of start with i wouldn't even say try to instill confidence into yourself but just have realistic expectations that it's going to be a learning process and you're going yeah. to get better at it and yeah i think a good thing there as well you know when you are just starting out your accounts for your practice maybe just have fun with it because you never know absolutely um, yep. you know, you don't want Instagram or your, your marketing, you don't want your marketing in general to feel like a chore because then you just no, won't no. do it. Yeah. You won't do it. Absolutely. And we see, and I see it all the time, you know, firms that have had the best intentions yeah. for laying out what on paper looked like a really good plan that has never really eventuated because it just, 
was too much. It was too overwhelming or it was a bit out of the comfort zone or it just didn't feel enjoyable, you know, and the firms that actually suffer from this the most are the busy ones. Yeah. You know, when you're, when you're busy and you're absolutely bursting at the seams with work and documentation and stuff and you're thinking about your pipeline three months from now, you've got this nagging feeling like, I better do some social media, get my name out there a little bit more. But yeah. <laughs> if you're just, yeah, trying to force it into that kind of schedule can be really, really tough. So, yeah. um, it's I this think, is exactly yeah. what we find at Bowerbird as well. You know, we people sort of say, oh, I could go on the monthly plan and, you know, just turn my marketing on and off when I need to find new projects. But yeah. no, it is a no. forever <laughs> evolving door. You need to yeah. consistently yeah. feed and put effort into it. And, you know, the effort doesn't need to be uh, two hours every day. I mean, big firms hired someone like me. I looked after the Cox social media accounts for a year and a half. Yeah. Um, alone. That was my whole role, really, and to do, you know, project yeah. marketing and internal comms. But I was a dedicated person to that. And we grew yeah. the community by 35,000 people because I was yeah. on it every day. But Just consistent. A small, yeah. it, it's consistency, exactly. And it didn't really mean that, um, you know, the content wasn't, I mean, it was great. We had great projects. Um, but it wasn't that I was doing anything revolutionary. It was just consistency. Yeah. And I yeah. think there are particularly in my posts I've just posted for everyone who's just joined. Um, there's a couple of tips on how to um, start kickstart your marketing. Um, so make a plan, figure out your values, and just use tools to help you. Yep. Um, yep. But Dave, what would you say to somebody who was, uh, say, a, a young practice or a practice still mm. within that sort of emerging sort of first maybe five to ten years of practice? What would you say to them is something important to consider with their media? With their media or with their yeah. social media? Social okay. media. Um, social yeah. media. Okay, so what's something important for them? To try and like paint a scenario like how much, how many visual assets do they have? Like wh how much work have they got in the bag to just use? That would be like the first question I'd want to right. know. They've got five projects on the go, one completed. Small. Ooh, one Small. completed. Okay, one completed. okay. I'm starting young yeah. and then we'll, we'll build up. Okay. So if that project that was completed was just a real, just masterclass, mm -hmm. I would try to continue to talk about that project in different ways. Yep. What I would probably do would be to try and figure out what the, like the real message of that project was, um, and then try to really double down into that and keep on talking about that and start to really cause a bit of a ruckus around this idea of, hey, this project had a really good idea in it and I'm not done talking about it, yeah. <laughs> which is like, the way to go, right? Yeah. And to go, I would, if I was an architect and I'd just done one residential project, I'd be saying that this is the future of living and I'd be speaking to the newspaper and knocking on my local member's door and going, this oh, should be, yes. everybody should know about this, right? I would be really trying to take it far because you've got good ideas in your project, you understand them, other architects understand them, but just keep keep on spreading that message about that built project. Now, with the unbuilt stuff, mm. you don't have finished photos, so what do we do? Um, really important to document the process and not just the construction process, that's kind of the builder's process, that should be on their Instagram, but your process. And I think there can be a lot of power to that. You know, people mm. people sort of trip themselves up a little bit on process because they think it's just, you know, a lot of the time it just feels like site visit photos or whatever. But I, I kind of talk about this with clients as sort of like the Jaws theory, like in Steven Spielberg's Jaws, their shark was terrible. If you saw the shark, you wouldn't be scared of it at all. So, so yeah. the whole movie, they don't show the shark. And it turns out later that was genius because it's so much more horrific to yeah. see the fin and just the waves in the water, you know, that kind of thing. And I think there are firms that have actually demonstrated the JAWS principle in action on Instagram, firms like Trius, Matt Goodman, yeah. a lot of these emerging firms that, hey, we don't have finished projects, so what am I gonna do? I'm gonna show very evocative little glimpses of architecture, I'm gonna show materials, travel inspiration, I'm gonna do really, really just imaginative kind of renders, but more sort of taken to a really thoughtful about the fact they're going on Instagram and they're not just for communicating clients. Yeah. Um, just to try and get as creative within the limitation of going, I have no, you know, beautiful Ben Hosking photos to share on Instagram this week. So Love you, ben. <laughs> I, yeah, like <laughs> shout out to Ben, right? Um, that, <laughs> yeah. That's obviously a, 
a good you know a good stage to get to but prior to that you're going i literally don't have it but i'm i've set a commitment that i'm going to be consistent on this platform mm -hmm. and i'm going to keep it simple and focus on it so what yep. can i do and for and for some firms that'll be like they become more of a photographer for the first year before they really become an architect you know they're just kind of really focusing on just capturing good images and and again like i was saying before kind of contributing to the architecture community just bringing the goods right yeah so, absolutely um, yeah that, that would Great. that would kind of be the focus yeah and then okay let's consider that we're um a slightly older and more mature practice maybe we have oh. maybe five to ten built works on our books um and yeah. they're all um, I'd say maybe of those 70% are of publishable quality because we all know we yeah. take on jobs sometimes just to pay the rent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what would you do with um, that level of completed work? Okay. So, yeah, a larger firm might have, you know, 30, 40 projects, like a whole bunch of projects. And basically they're kind of gathering dust on the hard drives at the architecture firm. Dusty photo somewhere, syndrome. They're, yes. They're always somewhere on the server. <laughs> we don't know where they are, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, the, the challenge with a larger firm is getting consensus around what to do with the Instagram account. Um, in your situation, Celeste, Cox was smart that they were like, this is a person's responsibility and the rest of us, hopefully, will just kind of <laughs> take a step back and just entrust you to do that. But yep. that is that is the exception rather than the that rule is. when it comes to large firms. <laughs> yes. So yeah. So what usually happens is you have this kind of chain of communication about every single Instagram post. Things tend to get quite diluted and watered down and lose their kind of, you know, their essence until really the Instagram account can can really if you if you let it, it can just turn into we are very excited to announce our new project here and announce our new project there. And that's if so I not see... very good. If I see another architect say, we are delighted to have won the yeah, Australian Institute of Architects are, Award for commercial category. Yeah, we are no, delighted. We can do They're better than delighted. this, guys. Yeah, everyone's yeah, delighted. Exactly. But are you excited? Are you thrilled? Are you yeah, kind of, like proud? Ex ex exactly. So if I was um, if I was working with a larger firm, I would try to get them to focus on like an area of positioning because they can use their size and their status in the design community to really drive an issue to the public um, and to and to the broader architecture community because people are following them. Um, I think I think Breathe, Jeremy McLeod, Nightingale, yes. and all the other directors that are involved in Nightingale, all the other collaborators are leading by example on that front. I think if you're a large firm, you would really want to be able to be that effective on social media and mm -hmm. by using your clout to do something that's actually causing a lot of change in the industry. Yes. That, I mean, who, like that social media plan just writes itself when you're doing something that's genuinely really interesting to people and kind of causing a bit of a ruckus. <laughs> like, it's just very easy. Um, but if a firm hasn't made that leap yet to kind of figuring out a real sort of strong position on something and they're just very much kind of broadcasting their work, I would suggest to most of those firms that increasing the frequency um, and cre increasing the variety and just taking swings at the bat as far as the range of content and photos and bringing and back videos, slightly older photos and, and videos yep. and galleries and just you've got strong images you've got a really big catalog it's like you know if, if, if you're a large firm it's like going to see the Beatles right like oh, not the Beatles like it's the Rolling Stones like you, you don't want to see them play their new stuff you just want to see kind of the classics and I think that you know a lot of these architecture firms have really respectable bodies of work and there's nothing wrong with just putting that stuff out on Instagram but that will only get you so far as um, likes exposure reach and a firm a big firm with a big reputation and lots and lots of photos to post can easily get to 40, 50, 60,000 followers without doing anything particularly magical with captions and hashtags or whatever. They just, they're just posting every day and they have so much content. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to quickly if, jump in, Dave, yeah, because sure. we've got a question from Timothy Percy, Insta Semantics. Timothy, I'm guessing you want to talk about um, like the <laughs> detail of posts. If you want to comment a little bit more detail of your question there, that would be yeah, fabulous. Yeah. Oh. 
for sure. Um, if anyone I'm else has questions, super curious. <laughs> please ask us because we are so happy yeah. to answer anything that you have. Yeah, definitely. Um, that would be great. Yes, Dave, you're right. You know, big practices have opportunities to share. They've got a lot of content and they've got a lot, a lot of content of mm-hmm. clout. So yep. I guess um, the opportunity there is what we're really saying is that consistency is key. Yep. Yeah, and they can be consistent as more than anybody else. They could be twice a day consistent, you know, and they can le- really, all of that, those individual images add up to a lot, a lot of reach. And But at a certain point, like that exposure can be kind of, empty calories after a while like sure a lot of people are interacting with it but it can be kind of nutritionally quite empty for that firm they may not be seeing the intended results coming from it apart from just having a general brand awareness if that's all they're going for that's fine but i would want to see a firm do it in a couple of phases and start by getting all of that building up that momentum and that exposure and then harnessing it for good (laughs) oh my gosh Yeah. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We've got some guys power washing a pavement next to me. No, that's, that's totally okay. I like it. You're on the run. This is how you should be using Instagram. Well, this is the time difference. <laughs> Hosting parlor is great, but it is a little tricky being in the UK. Um, obviously, guys, for yeah. who's just joined, I'm in London. I, I live here now with Bowerbird. I um, run them here in the UK. So it's a little hard for yeah. me to in between meetings I'm hosting um okay great so be consistent shout about your project even if you have one go hard and go far uh until people are just sick of seeing it I would I would I would go even further than that I would just absolutely yeah 100 what about um getting published internationally now I think this is a pretty big one I I heard you guys talking about that last night yes okay stories versus posts ink interiors architects have just asked us um, whether you're saying you're excited to win a water thrilled. Yeah, look, you're right, Timothy. Um, semantics yeah. is true, but I think you can be, what I would say, I'm going to come back to you, Ink Interiors. Tim, I agree. Like, when I say, don't just say, we're delighted to have won this award. Like, yeah, we are excited. But inject personality and your brand values into your captions. I would say have fun with them. I guess that um, it's, as Dave sort of mentioned, it's harder for... Um, it's hard. Oh, it's so practice. hard for a big firm. Yeah. Because we have to appease 48 directors. Um, happy or yeah. stoked, same, same, Tim. You're right, but there can be a fun way to share that. You can be clever with your graphics. You can be clever with um, how you share that kind of content. It doesn't, like, you can be happy. That's great. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, don't just revert to the same old, same old, because you can have fun with it. Um, Ink yeah. Interiors, Architects, I'm coming back to you. Stories versus posts. All right, Dave, what is the value yeah of a story and what's the value of a post? Well, stories, okay, so posts, okay, so with posts, the Instagram feed, like that part of the app is really a kind of a beautiful museum. <laughs> like realistically, yes. you know, your images are going down the Instagram feed against some of the most beautiful images the, inst- the internet has to offer. That is competitive real estate. and. You know, the way what stories have done and what's changed is that the feed and posting to your profile has become a little bit of a, in many cases, less is more kind of strategy to maintain that high, high level of quality. Um, But the stories, they're a wild west. Anything goes in Instagram stories. Yep. Um, You know, if you're if you're showing what the dog's wearing today, (laughs) what what coffee you had for lunch and really trying to inject that that personality into the feed. And I think that's the best place to really show process. That's the really best place to show your people. And it, it feels like it feels very personal. It has personal touches all over it from the labels that you put on the photos. It has a lightheartedness that isn't in the feed. The feed is really serious, like all architecture, but stories is very fun, casual. It's 24 hours. It disappears. So, it allows architects and going back to small practices to show so many more dimensions of yes. their daily life than just the end product, the end result of 12 months of hard work, which is great. And that's really what can put you on the map. But in the meantime, um, maintaining and building a relationship with an audience who yeah. have a similar lifestyle to you and are also into the same things you're into. Mm. Yeah, I would say as well, you know, we at Bowbird we talk about sharing the stories of the projects you want more of. Now, 
it doesn't have to be, oh, sorry, of the work you want more of. That isn't always just project-based. You can also yeah. do, um, that relates to being clients as well. Um, Timothy, no wonder, no worries. Okay, one last one. Do you see social media driving interest in the work for small firms or is it just about having a unique voice? I know so many practices who get work through Instagram, particularly here in the UK. Yeah. I think the market is far more competitive. It's a bigger place. Um, mm -hmm. I really feel that social media is a huge driving force um, for work and it can be. Again, yeah. it comes down to you being um, on top of it and managing your account and being consistent. Dave? Yeah. What do you think about Instagram being a lead gen tool? Yeah, it's absolutely, it's absolutely massive. I mean, uh, I would say, I would say the vast majority of my clients uh, who, who, uh, who are more established, a little bit more established, they've been going for a few years. Instagram is the primary online driver. Now, how does that compare to offline? your client telling their friends and telling their friends that's fantastic but that'll always happen anyway right because you're good at your job the online stuff is kind of more of where you're more aspirational into the kind of areas that you want to move into exactly what you were saying celeste um the kind of work that you want to get more of so yeah. it can be quite focused around that um but you know pros prospective architecture clients um behaviorally they may be liking and clicking on everything but it may not necessarily mean that much to them but the firms i think the secret to firms that actually get a lot of work from instagram is that they're doing something that is kind of weird different so super super tiny segment of people would just be so attached to that that their work almost takes on like a cult following following um, yeah yeah, like a really, like if the work is just at that point where average person on the street would probably say it's not for me, but a small segment of people in this kind of architecture community would look at that work and be like, I've never seen a house that good before in my life. That has blown all my expectations. Yeah. That, those are the, the firms that are tending to do that kind of really, um, Seth Godin called it purple cow, like just so yes. glaringly different from the norm. Uh, yeah. Those are the ones that tend to be, taking uh, a lot of return from Instagram and that's just that's just social media doing what social media does really they may not even have the biggest audience sometimes some quite small accounts with a couple of thousand firms with a couple of thousand followers mm. there's just something about their work and it all ultimately comes back to the work but Instagram has been a great platform for them to like a magnet for the for just the people that would like that architecture um, I'd say as yeah. well something key there is that um those practices have a very clear message and aesthetic. Yep. So yep. what we're finding is that when you're doing this different work, it doesn't have to be, you know, a purple cow or a, a, a crazy interior. Yeah. Yeah. It can be even Not crazy, like, but yeah. It can even yeah. be Tria Studio. I think they're a really good example. They, yep. no worries, Tim. Uh, they have a fabulous um, aesthetic. It's very, very yep. um, consistent again. And I think people would identify, I guess, what you would call their architectural brand and go, well, when I want my minimalist house or when I'm ready to do my apartment, yep. I know they're the people that I identify with as a practice yep. and I know how to reach out to them. I think something yep. else that can be said for Instagram accounts is building up this sense of personality. And hmm. I've noticed this with my own social media is that... Um, hmm. When I contact, so part of my role here at Balbert is getting in touch with new firms and getting them onto the platform. Yep. Um, I hardly email anyone these days. I just DM them through Instagram. It's because yes. I'm a person. Yep. They can see who yep. I am, what kind of values I have. And it would be the same as if you're contacting, um, a client's contacting a practice. You yep. instantly get this snapshot of what this practice is like. So it can be really powerful to share your personality and the work that you do. Um, and it doesn't always have to be your work. Um, actually, Dave, one of your clients, uh, Amos Goldreich Architecture here in the UK. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, big fan of Amos. mine. I love Amos. <laughs> I know he, he loves you. He loves Bowbird. He does. He's been so nice. He's been a really great He's introduction number one fan. to my Yeah. Oh, it yeah. goes both ways. Um, yeah. Amos has a fabulous Instagram and I'd say only what, 30% of his, pro of his posts are his own work. He is yeah. a huge oh, advocate. Like yes, he's a huge advocate <laughs> yeah. for posting other people's work. And all that that yeah. does is it shows um, what I would call, it shows faith in the industry. It shows mm. um, his design sort of aesthetic and choices. And it also mm. shows his support for other practices.
Sorry for all the noise, yeah. guys. <laughs> yeah, it, it it shows that. Um, it definitely shows that. I think it's I think it's a good strategy. It, it's been a good strategy for him. He's been doing that for a long time. And it, mm. I mean, Amos has twenty six thousand followers now. It wasn't that long ago that he had like one hundred and twenty five followers. Mm -hmm. And um, posting, you know, posting sort of inspo was a great way for for him to get there because basically it's a simple thing, right? It's going, well, you know. I'm essentially starting a magazine about that will be read by the people that like the same work that I like that ultimately reflects the kind of work that I do. So while I may not have that work to show them yet, one day soon I will and they'll love it, right? And they'll already be there and I don't have to start from scratch building an audience. But yep. I will say that kind of resharing other architects' architecture, that does divide architects. So it's not for everybody. No. Um, but it is... It is something that when we talk about what you can do within, when you're trying to be creative, when you don't have a whole bunch of work sitting on your hard drive, what are some of the things that you could do? A more, a, a sort of, I found that, you know, that curating idea is absolutely fantastic, but it really comes down to a choice of, is it best to do it on your account or is it best to maybe start a side account? You know, um, Worthy Dreams in, uh, in Melbourne by Dreamer Studio. Um, not Beige, Please by Sergio Menino in New York. Yeah. Both Instagram accounts, which are basically just that architect picking stuff they like, but just kind of separating it from their firm mm. enough that they feel comfortable with making it clear because, you know, you don't want people to sort of misread your intentions, right? But they just want to sort of go, look, these are very separate things and this is out of all those things you mentioned. So it's like respect and admiration for this work. And also creating value for your audience by bringing mm. it all together in one place, which mm. is, so it's such a good strategy. Mm. I think another thing that I wanted to quickly uh, talk on, um, whilst we've got some yeah. new followers in the chat, hello everybody, Dave and I have been talking about um, social media for architects, we've been focusing a lot on Instagram. I have a question for you, which is about hashtags. Sure. When oh, and yeah. when not to use them, <laughs> do they go in the first comment? What's your perspective on this? Because I think okay. that um, a lot of architects uh, do ask me about hashtags and I yeah, yeah. sometimes scratch my head. <laughs> okay. So uh, the advice on this in the industry changes, like depending on which day of the week it is. It's always Absolutely. different. Yeah. And, and look, to be honest, nobody really knows. But I'll tell you about <laughs> what my company policy is. <laughs> that yep. has served me well for a number of years. Um, we have done 30 hashtags, the full 30 out of 30. We mm -hmm. drop them in a comment below the caption. Yep. Uh, we pick hashtags based on general popularity. So hashtag Australian architecture, hashtag architecture, hashtag design. We never do hashtag brick, hashtag staircase, hashtag, you know, uh, whatever. Hashtag we never go into table. the detail. No. Never. It's, yeah. We're always just going for what are the largest hashtag communities around architecture. And over time, Instagram has made it even easier to actually get into the top post section of those hashtags. It used to be that if you wanted to be in the top nine of hashtag architecture, you needed like 28,000 likes on your photo. But you go on there today and you'll see photos with about 300 likes in there for hours getting yeah. tens of thousands of views, you know, so it's become very fair. So we use 30 of the biggest ones we can find and we do not change them from post to post. We do not need to. We yeah. use the same hashtags in each post. Um, and yeah, that, that, does, that, does that kind of that's cover great. it? I mean, that's I mean, just that's, me. That's um, oh, Incanterious, <laughs> that's the perfect comment. Do you know, I, I joined Instagram maybe, well, when did the platform come out? Eight years ago? Like 2009 or something yeah. like that. Yeah, around so then. I reckon I joined um, in 2000, early 2010 and this was yeah. very early days on the platform and I used to do that. I had to go back through yeah. all my old posts and archive everything. Yeah. It was so embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah, um, every, everybody does it. Everybody does it. But the, the, the reality is, and people make up hashtags, you know, like like they're a big, you know, huge company running a TV ad campaign. You don't make up hashtags because nobody's following them. No. You know, nobody's looking at them. So don't, you know, so just Although, use... I would say... Oh, I okay. Good... I, know where, I know where you're going. I know where you're going. Uh, yeah, you know where I'm going with this. So I have yeah, read a great yeah. article by Anthony Richardson, the designer motive. Yeah, yeah, Anthony, yeah. He's, about... on, he, he's, he's on to it. He knows. He's so... He's fabulous. Yeah. You guys don't all yeah. follow him. Follow the designer motive. Anthony has great yeah. photos, really good inspo, but also great tips and tricks and interviews. Yeah. Um, 
he wrote a fabulous blog post about um, your project hashtag. Oh, was that you? No, probably not me because I don't believe in project hashtags. Okay, well, it was definitely not you. I'm an opponent of them. (laughs) (laughs) So Anthony wrote a post and Kennedy Nolan are great at this. They will have, you know, um, Northcote Roundhouse or um, Fitzroy North. What was it? McLean Street. uh, McKean Street, sorry. Yeah. Um, McKean Street, yep. Kennedy Nolan, or KN, you know, Roundhouse, like whatever that project name is, using that uh, hashtag because then your audience can go back through and look at the images in that tag and it's basically the whole build process. That's a beautiful yeah, way yeah, to tell a story, but it's tedious. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would pr- I prefer to just um, create a sort of featured story on your account and then just add all project-related stuff yes. to that featured story. But that's but that is super old school, like um, you know, early days Instagram tactic, the project things so where you can go and follow back. But there are examples. I mean, um, I think I think um, Andrew Maynard does and Austin Maynard do really good sort of um, really good culture hacking around their projects. They give them yeah. cool names and they they do things that develop some interest in almost the brand name of that building, and they're quite conscientious about. The remembering the name of that project and building a familiarity with it, the name actually matters. So I think that the hashtag Kim Bill. Case makes sense. Straight yeah, away. Yeah, like, exactly. Just it comes to mind. The, sort, the sorts of things that just reinforce the sort of uniqueness of the projects, I think, mm. is key. Um, also, I mean, obviously, if you're doing something like, as like again, to mention Nightingale, obviously those those projects should have hashtags because they're a story that's kind of larger than the building itself. But, you know... You've got 30 hashtags to use. That's a lot of real estate. I don't care if you get rid of, like, five of the majors and put in, like, five kind of let's put our toe in the water with some of these other ideas. Absolutely go for it. Oh, my God. London is so loud. I'm so sorry. You know, <laughs> the, first, the first week that we moved here, I just had to, like, block my ears every time a siren went past. Yeah, they're so, they're ridiculous. Loud. Apologies, yeah. guys. <laughs> Um, all right, so we've talked about the fact yeah. that you guys need to be consistent with your posting, have some clear messaging. Um, everyone go yeah. and refer to my post today on Parlor about... Good post. Um, mm-hmm. Thank you, thank you. About some, just some mm-hmm. tips to make your comms easier and better. And there's so many tools you can use. So, Dave, do you yeah. recommend that um, practices invest in tools and what kind of tools do yeah. you recommend? Definitely. So, um, I mean, we are kind of just really talking about um, Instagram at the moment, just shorthand yeah. there. Um, yep. So the tool you mentioned later, later for scheduling yep. is great. I use a more, I use a more kind of complicated version called Sched, um, mm-hmm. but I, I think Bowbird, you guys might use that. Um, but yep. Sched, Sked is very clumsy if you're only managing one account. So mm-hmm. I know some firms use Hootsuite. I think Hootsuite's in that camp as well. It's, yeah. it's a lot of work to just manage one account. Whereas with I later, used, I use yeah. Sprout, Sprout Social, but mind you, Sprout, Sprout Social is amazing, but it's very, it's quite expensive. Yeah, later quite expensive is a, and a light version. Yeah, quite yeah. and quite confronting to a new user. Some of the platforms because they've got more features, they're more professional, right? So, but later is you know just drag and drop images. You'll absolutely love it. Everybody knows how to use it. It's and it's it's free if you've got one account. Great. Yeah, it's free or it's some, yeah. Uh, yeah, or to queue up more posts is like $9 a month or something. Um, the other tool that I would really recommend is an analytics tool called Minter, um, M-I-N-T-E-R. Now, that's useful because most people don't realize that you can sort of even find data in your Instagram account about how your posts are doing and how your account's growing and things like that. So firstly, use your Instagram insights, but... The problem with those insights is that they only give you seven days of data. You can only see what's happened over the last week. And I will quickly... Has this changed? uh, No, I will quickly interject. You guys need to have a business profile to be able to access those insights. A business profile, yep. Yep. So you can't do that on a personal profile, but if you switch to business, you can. Yeah, Yeah. so so you you have to begrudgingly set up a Facebook page for your business, which hardly anybody wants to do or has anymore. Um, And then you connect it to your Instagram account, which will give you insights. Then you go and use a tool like Minter, which is so much more useful because it means that you can zoom out to 12 months of data, 28 months of data, and you can look at how things have actually changed over time. And that's just so useful because you're trying to make decisions. You're trying to react to what's working and what isn't. And if you can only see little anomalies, like in the last three days, you're not going to have much information to glean from that. So, So Minter is a great tool. It's only like, 
think nine dollars again a month it's it's pretty small investment but that's a tool that i definitely um recommend for sure yep. um Wonderful. and then with other social media platforms i they're not they're not that tool heavy right i mean th these mm. tools are just about saving time and it'll be a lot easier to stick to your schedule if you you know schedule out your instagram posts once a month rather than uh, we haven't done one in a while. <laughs> should we post? You know. Should we post? Like, do you think we should? Should yeah. we post? Oh, when was the last time we posted? Oh, it's oh, it's been a couple of weeks. What are we? Yeah, yeah. it's yep. it's been way better to sit down for like half an hour once a month on the calendar. Architects are organized people. Yeah, I know that when are. something's on your calendar, you've got a commitment, you've got a deadline, it gets done, and yep. um, way better than me. I would, I would, I yeah, no way. I would never. I would be pushing that calendar event down 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 next week <laughs> uh, but you guys would stick to it and you would sit down and just go okay post for the next month bang mm. done easy mm. don't have to worry about it for a period of time apart from just you know maybe stories but yeah so those tools are very useful um, is there anything else any other tools like or anything like that I would just say get yourself a social media scheduling platform when you're doing it all day yeah. way through that app yeah. it takes ages I hardly do that anymore and I would also say like Maybe a, a word of advice from me is that don't post because you feel you have to. Post because yeah. you want to and you'll enjoy the platform so much more. Like It will just yeah. become more fun and approach it with, um, I guess, just pick a goal. And if your goal is to have fun and share what your practice values are, then that's easy because you can literally just have fun with it. Um, I don't think that you have to be serious all the time with social media. Um, I think that even if you're not looking to, um, you know, manage something a lot or schedule posts just curate your first nine tiles that's what everyone will see when they come to your account and then have mm -hmm. your contact details you yep. just want to be able that's to right. keep people to get a snapshot of you and then your phone number like that's all you need if you can't be bothered doing it so yep. yep, yeah definitely and 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 build up slowly um yeah you know uh, it's really it's really hard like if i'm writing a blog post about how how many times a week should you post on instagram I'm going to give the kind of the honest answer of maybe once a day, right? Because that probably is kind of optimal and that's the best advice, but that's not the best advice if you've been doing zero, you know, yeah. like that's, that's like giving a workout plan to somebody who hasn't exercised in months, right? So yes. it's much better. You have to start slow. And I would start with something that actually feels easy and very easy for you. Maybe that's just committing to once a week, or even if you haven't been posting in, like I, I started, I've started working with a client who hasn't used their Instagram account in a year and they've been avoiding it and procrastinating on it. So we're yep. just starting with a goal of sort of one post a fortnight, just but Great. making sure that it really happens. And then what I'm looking for in that, in that plan is to review and, and wait for them to tell me it feels like they're being lazy and they're not doing enough. And then we can slightly increase, but if you're looking down the barrel of, okay, we need to start scheduling seven posts a week. We need a newsletter every two weeks. We need to update the website once a month. We need to do this, this, and this, moving from a place of having done nothing. You're going to burn yourself out really, really quickly doing Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So just yes. start simple, one element at a time. A new practice, I would just focus on one channel to begin with. Don't even worry about other areas. You're not going to be able to juggle all those different things at once. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, slow. fantastic. That is such great advice. Look, I'm going to open up the floor again. Anyone else has any questions, please comment down. Oh, fantastic. That is such great advice. Look, I'm going to open up the floor again. Anyone else has any questions, please comment down here. Um, yeah. Let us know because we'll stick around for another few minutes and chat. Um, but I guess... Do you have any questions for me, Dave? You know, I mean, we we'll finally get to chat and uh, hang well, out. My, my, my question is, how did you possibly think this was going to be a 15-minute chat? <laughs> I know. Um, do you, I know. Do you think Instagram will... Okay, well, another one from Ink Interiors. Um, do you job. think Instagram will die off over the next few years? A lot of um, conflicting opinions about this, thoughts. And then Timothy Percy asks, is Facebook dead? So we well, have two kind of... Let's we start have two with kind Ink. Of, Ink got in first. I don't think so, it's going to die. I'm team Instagram. Yeah, I, I think I think team Instagram. Um, but, you know, it, 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 okay, so Facebook, Facebook never died either. It just stopped giving out free lunches to yep. businesses. 
um, that just basically said, you know, because there was a time there where you posted stuff to Facebook and you just, you were blowing up with visitors, eyeballs, attention. And yeah. that changed, that just changed, right? More, more brands came on board, more, more advertisers. And, um, you know, you've got to be, you've got to be a bit delusional if you think that's not going to happen to Instagram as well in some way, shape or form, like it will change. But I, I think we're already in, seeing this with, you know, the likes being taken away from yeah. influencers accounts. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Likes, um, feed posts. You know, I do get quite a lot of emails from clients like what the hell is going on with Instagram? Like it feels like it is week by week, just feeling like a different feast, especially over the last couple of months. It's been changing a lot, big features mm -hmm. changing. Um, but you know, one thing that Facebook and Instagram and particularly with Instagram is that they've not shied away from changing the platform quite significantly and adding new features. So feed has been sort of substituted into stories, stories maybe going more into story video than live, then maybe the feed just becomes stories and it just, it's an app that just keeps on changing. I don't know if somebody will come up and replace it because Facebook seemed to just buy out anybody <laughs> that, well, they um, bought Instagram. that tries I mean, to enter they... into the, they bought Instagram, right? Yeah. And then they basically copied all of Snapchat's features and they just, they are going to do that. But who, honestly, who knows, who knows, but the architecture community is on Instagram and it's a question of where will they move? And we haven't even seen the early adopters moving somewhere else. It's cause we are all here at the moment. Mm. And there isn't some cool place where all the cool kids are hanging out talking about architecture that isn't Instagram. So I would I would wait to find out what that is and then look at that as a sign that maybe over a course of a few years that might grow into something that we all move over to. Um, I would so, say so though, keep an eye. Yeah. Yeah, keep an eye out. I would say that there definitely are trends uh, changing and continuing within social as well. I think we're about to see a lot more architectural video. A lot yeah. more. I mean, like, yeah. you know, just this morning I was chatting to the guys at New Mac Agency who produce a fantastic yeah. tiny house series on YouTube. You guys should all love um, Never yeah. Too Small TV. Absolutely mm -hmm. wonderful. You know, they interview yeah. architects and homeowners who live in really small spaces and they are producing these fantastic videos that are getting picked up by outlets all over the world. Um, yeah. So I would say video is really changing. Video. Um, video will change the way that architects communicate. Yep. Live absolutely. journals um, in Percy. Definitely. I don't know what live I'm not, journal I'm not so, is. Yeah, I'm not so familiar with live, live journal. Tim, Tim Percy is on You're the ahead cutting of us. edge. You're <laughs> ahead of us. I will have to go you and should do join the call. Yeah, <laughs> I have we, no we idea. We could somehow bring you into this, I'm sure. Actually, I don't think oh, you can do it with three people. Celeste, we're so old hat. We haven't even heard of live journal. Um, I know. We're out. We're done. Well, yeah, videos, I, I would say that like, just, you know, between you and me and whoever's watching, like, um, I would say like a quarter of my clients, a quarter of the firms I'm working with are investing heavily into video yep. and they are pretty certain that that's where stuff's going to head, um, in the future. And it's seen as like the biggest kind of opportunity, um, for them. And we see it with Instagram TV and let's not forget that YouTube is an unbelievable platform and architects are barely paying it any attention. Um, go, go look at what Andrew Maynard's doing every week on YouTube and you'll start to see a real early adopter at his, at his best in his element. Also, experimenting. Lol, lol, Tim Percy, you're showing your age here. Maybe I'm too young for live journal. 2002? Oh, uh, yeah, we're too young. We're too young. We're, we're too we're, young. <laughs> let's, let's call it that. Maybe oh, we're in front of oh, the girl. dude. That backfired, hey, Celeste. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Tim. All in good, all in good fun. Um, yeah, absolutely. Video is huge. I think that's absolutely changing the way that we communicate. Well, actually, you know, it's funny that you say uh, early adopters because I now know that, so I'm working a lot with editors and publishers, you know, with my work at Bowerbird. Yeah. And there yeah. are three major publications yeah. here in the UK that are global design blogs. I will not name names that will feature mm -hmm. any, pro well, any project to a degree that yeah. has a video attached because moving image is so engaging. Um, I did a short consultant. Let's just say we've been taking advantage of this. <laughs> Me and a yeah. couple of my clients. Yeah. Publications love video right now. They love it. Like, they can do so much more with it on social. Yep. And also I would say as well, so a couple of the publications that I work with here, 
Um, mm. Or no, they won't just take a video. They also take gifts. So if you want to create gifts and you can just do, you know, some simple like opening closings of windows on facades, like that's an easy way to get your content noticed by publications. Um, mm -hmm. Bowerbird mm -hmm. supports videos. Were you just were you just alluding to matter architects in London? Absolutely. Open and closing facades. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Gif, gifts, gifts gone wild. They absolutely yeah. killed it with a gif of just, just one element of their project opening and shutting, but it really yeah. just encapsulated everything that was so cool and special about that project. And I think as well, off it, it gave goes. Life. It gave it life. Yeah. Uh, you know, you yeah. can see how something works. And, you know, what we all want to do, why we watch videos, is because we, I mean, yeah. I got, for a little while there, I got really addicted to those tasty videos, you know, people like making food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. just would watch them when I was, yeah, I was just watching them while I commuted because I loved seeing what was going to happen next. They were just putting onion in a pan, yeah. like really not that hard. The onion cooked yeah. great. But we do love to see what happens next. So if we can yep. incorporate that into architecture too, I think that would be really strong for brands or practices to use. Yeah, and, and I, I wonder, like, I don't even know if architects are necessarily going to drive this change. I think it's going to come from... I think it's going to come from the media and come from the professionals that are advising architects um, and the people that they rely on, like outsiders or, or just things that they look to outside of architecture to give them ideas. Hi, Sarah. Uh, yeah, like... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and, oh, I know Sarah too. Hey. <laughs> um, so, like, and then they're going to start seeing some success happen and it will be sort of self-evidently a thing that everybody will want to kind of jump on that bandwagon and start doing or start seeing, you know... It, it's just, man, I, I've been, I don't know how many times I've got John Elway's, you know, John Elway's website bookmarks so close at hand oh, whenever I'm talking to clients about websites. That's because, the one I show too. It's so beautiful. Yeah, I, I, I show that. That video um, and another one of my clients got a video by um, a video by that same videographer because it's just, she just gets what we want to do with architecture, which is just so... I'm going I mean, to jump in that, there that, and direct yeah. everybody to Jelway Architecture. So it's John Elway's um, Archipractice. He's a sole practitioner, I believe. Yeah, in Brisbane. Um, and he's Thanks. just got this one project that is absolutely beautiful. This goes back to what we were saying before, where you have maybe one built thing, go hard, send it as far as yeah, you can. Yeah, go hard. Mm -hmm. And he's got this great video on his homepage. And then it's just a, a roll of like 40 images of this project. And it's so encapsulating and yeah. very emotive. Um, yep. I think that it would be, yeah, it's a, it's a really great website. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Props to, um, I just had a look, Angela Leonardi, absolutely fantastic yes. videographer. I think also an architecture student as well, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, it's basically like a beautiful short film about a house and mm -hmm. that's, I don't, I don't need like that ticks all the boxes for me, that video. I don't need anything else. I fall in love with that house. Right. Yeah. And it speaks to me with my consumer hat on, like maybe I would like to buy a house or build a house. That video speaks to me more than almost anything I see just in still images on Instagram, which wash over me yeah, <laughs> completely yeah. by this point. You know, because there's just so many, that there's so many beautiful images of, of beautiful architecture on Instagram that it can just Terrarium be super hard. Yeah, Terrarium that's house, that's right. Yeah, so, well done. So it can, it can be a way to stand out, but it can also just be like, as you said, Celeste, just to go so much deeper into a key project mm. and to just you know, get every little bit of goodness out Thank of it. You. Um, you know, that's, that's the, I, I see that as sometimes the biggest shame when a, when a, pro, when a practice has done amazing projects, but they've just sort of tied the knot, filed them away and then just moved on to the next thing and the next thing. And they never really stop to sort of smell the roses with a great project and really yeah. give it its, what it deserves by, mm -hmm. and that's what I sort of see media and what you guys do with Bowbird as marketing as um it's just kind of it's just giving the project the respect that it deserves by trying yeah. to get it out to people I think you know um you, you're excited about your work and other people would love it so it's good to you know do some of that stuff and bring some of that passion into things like those videos but yeah absolutely. John Elway absolutely killing it yeah. um yeah so oh. so anyway I think video that's <laughs> Video's a big one. Um, I'm going to sign us off because we've been chatting yeah. for ages and I'm scared my battery is going to die. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um, it was fabulous to talk to you, Dave. Thank you so much yeah, for being part of us. my parlor live stream. You oh, guys no worries. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much.
<laughs> you guys can all find Dave at vanity.projects on Instagram. You can find me at Celeste underscore Balti or at Bowerbird, wherever you'd like to find me. I'm around. Yep. Feel free to drop us both any questions that you have about media or social media or marketing or communications. Um, yep. We're always happy to answer questions. And I Absolutely. hope that, um, again, reiterating the point that comms isn't just about sharing your own practice story. It's about getting architecture in front of the public and being able to engage um, the public within our fabulous profession and keep it all going. Yep. Yeah, awesome. Excellent. Love it. All right. Thanks, Alex, was... and thank you, everybody, for watching. It was yeah, awesome fun. Yeah, thanks, guys. All right, bye. All right. See ya. Bye.